Good afternoon. I'm David Rakovich, president of the Stockton Maritime Museum with a new update video for you. Today we're doing something a little different. We're not on the ship. We're over at our shop. The museum maintains a shop where we have all of our gear stored that we've been acquiring for the last number of years. And the most important piece we've ever acquired, I'm standing in front of here, this is our 40 millimeter Borfus cannon that we were just able to acquire last week. Uh, thanks to the efforts of Commander Jay Deloach and his gun fund that he matched all the uh, donations on a two-to-one basis, we were able to acquire this recently. We are going to put it in the shop here, clean it up, uh, do some blasting, painting, and a few small repairs before we install it on the Lucid. It won't be long, maybe in four to six weeks we'll be ready to put this thing on the ship. It's in exceptionally good condition for its age. This was originally built in World War II. It came off of a patrol craft that was built for the Navy in 1968, most recently. And like I said, it's in very good shape mechanically. And uh, to prove that to you, I'm gonna have one of my younger assistants here, Vinny, who's nine years old. Vinny, if you would crank this thing around for us, please. So thanks again to all of you that participated in our gun fund and Jay Deloach for matching all those contributions two to one. Uh, for those of you that maybe missed out on that opportunity, we have some other great news. By a fortuitous encounter we had, one of our volunteers had, uh, Mike McDowell, overhearing someone speak about a rather odd engine collection they had. We were able to pick up two more 1D17 Packard non-magnetic minesweeper engines. These things are as rare as can be. We had two, and we just acquired two more in the last couple weeks. Um, now, these sorts of things, like I said, are very rare. This isn't something you could put in the budget because these are not for sale anywhere. We heard about these two. The gentleman that was saving them agreed to sell them to us, and we had to jump on them. Uh, we didn't have time to raise the money. So now we're looking for supporters that would like to be honored on our Packard drive, our Packard engine drive, like we did for the gun drive. Any contribution of $500 or more will be marked permanently on a plaque down in the engine room. All we have to do is get a check from you and a memo put Packard fund. We, uh, like I said, we picked up two of these. There again, we're going to restore these uh, optically. We're going to clean them up and paint them and install them in the engine room eventually, not right away. We're doing other things right now, of course, but we're going to return them to their original so the engine room look, looks like it did back when it was first built. Like I said, they're as rare as can be. We had this opportunity, so we jumped on it. Now we have to pay for them. So we, if, we'd love to have your help in making that happen. Let's take a good shot of this thing. It's in extremely good shape. The, you, those of you that are engine techs understand the, the turbo is not here. We have it. it. It was removed from the engine. It's about the size of a garbage can. Um, V12 diesel twin six-cylinder Bosch injectors, all aluminum. The block is aluminum. Uh, the, the crank is stainless steel, a very high-tech engine. These were several hundred thousand dollars a piece in the early 1950s, so you can imagine what they would be uh, today. They were made specifically for the minesweepers as they were designed to be non-magnetic. No ferrous iron used in their construction. So rather unique. It, uh, some people mistake this for the Packard aircraft engines. Those were uh, smaller V12 gas engines. This is specific, this is a diesel uh, with about 40 pounds of boost. It was specifically designed for MSOs. It's a 1700 cubic inch and 600 horsepower. Uh, we're not going to run it, but we're going to make it look like it's running and uh, bring it back to its pristine condition. This is our 26 foot motor whaleboat that we were able to buy a couple of years ago directly from the Navy. Surplus, we're the first civilian owners of this thing. 
one of our key volunteers, Don Reinhardt, has been out here. He sanded the hull and painted it, and now he's working on the inside. We hope to have this ready to go sometime later this year. Uh, the mechanicals have already been done. It runs. It's got a four-cylinder Perkins diesel engine, and we're going to use this to put around the Delta there. And once we have some davits, we're going to hoist it up onto the main deck on the port side as it was when the Lucid was originally built. Here we are in our parts storage container, also at our shop off-site, where we've gathered parts for the last seven years from our trips to Bremerton and Susun and a lot of donations we've got from sailors, much as yourself. Um, and we keep the items here until they're ready to be refurbished and installed on the Lucid. It's quite crowded in here. It looks like a lot of junk, but believe me, there was, there was twice as much in here at one time. A lot of it's been installed already. And we've got some wonderful artifacts in here, like original naval Navy bells that will go on the quarter deck, um, uh, repeaters for the gyro compass, uh, magnetic compasses, all sorts of kitchen gear, original kitchen gear, um, first aid boxes, status boards, um, one MC communication equipment for out the outside uh, of the ship on the um, superstructure. Original ship's lighting, speakers, gyro compass repeater for the port and starboard wing outside of the pilot house, Polaris on a stand, all polished up, ready to be installed on the flybridge, 12 inch signal lamps direct from the Navy, and a nice radar repeater that's going to also go up on the flybridge once the awning is installed. And then all sorts of lighting for the different areas, external areas on the ship. The interior lighting has all been installed now on the ship, but these go on the fan tail, uh, some on the side, either, either side of the ship, and quite a few up on the forecastle. One of our great finds was original gyro compass. This will go down in the gyro compass room, which is just forward of lower berthing and we have a huge collection of donated radios and test equipment. Some of this stuff is earlier, some of this is World War II, but some of the older stuff will be installed in the emergency radio room, which is aft starboard side below the uh, fan tail. And also radio test equipment, which will go in the, in the radio storage locker area on the ship. Um, Hundreds and hundreds, we've collected of hundreds of hundreds of electrical appliances that we restore as we need them and install them on the ship. All brass, switches, outlets, all sorts of things like that. Here's some more radio test equipment, Hewlett Packard radio test equipment. Um, PA system for the 1M, uh, no this is not 1MC, this is for the uh, shipboard announcements and uh, original alarm bells. Voice tubes, all sorts of voice tubes, and the voice tube funnel that goes on the bridge so they could talk to the uh, folks up on the, down in the pilot house. And interestingly enough, just yesterday we were donated these three shells. These are practice shells for six inch naval gun as used in World War II on a cruiser. Um, cruisers like the San Francisco, the Boise, those types of ships. A lot of people confuse them for battleships, but obviously they're smaller not armed as much and they had six inch guns. These are practice rounds. We're going to make some uh, projectiles to put in these and use them as a welcome uh, decoration on the quarter deck as is often used on Navy ships. So you can see we've been busy collecting these parts because these are, these are things you can't run down to Home Depot or Lowe's and pick up when you need them. You have to get them when you can. Uh, your donations makes all this possible for us to purchase this gear or to go scavenge it from Bremerton, from the Navy. And some of this has, been, has come from uh, collectors, veterans, such, such as yourself. Uh, irreplaceable stuff, my wife, my wife calls it junk, but believe me, this is valuable ship stuff. We're gonna make the Lucid look like it did when it was in Navy service with all these bits and pieces. So that's it for this update. Um, I wanna thank you again for your past support. I'm standing in front of one of the other Packards that we were able to acquire. This one here is complete, as you can see, with the turbocharger and everything on it. This one's about 100% complete, actually. But uh, once again, if you're able to support us to pay for these things, 
Any $500 donation or more will be noted permanently on a plaque down in the engine room next to these engines. Thank you. Continue to follow us. Send us any questions you may have. Post those questions on our Facebook page. Uh, these videos will also be posted on our YouTube channel under USS Lucid. Same way you find us on Facebook at USS Lucid. Thanks, and uh, we look forward to updating you again soon as we complete our sprinkler system here in the next few weeks. Thank you very much.